I'm going to be showing you how to use GIMP to remove a background or if it's easier to actually select the object you want in a picture both using masks. Okay, I've opened this picture. It's a hummingbird and it shares some of the same colors or colorations of its background. Some of the grays, some of the browns and yellow browns. So it's going to be awfully difficult to use any of the color selection tools like the fuzzy select tool to um, uh, select the background and leave the hummingbird behind. So first of all, let's add a mask. How do we do that? If you look over here in the layers panel, you will see the layer with the hummingbird on it. Right click on it and go down to add layer mask and you'll get the add layer mask dialog. There it is. We just want the white one. It's the default. So just click add and you'll see this little white space go up on there. Now we have to move over to the toolbar. We want to click on the paintbrush and then for the foreground and background colors in the lower left corner, check the, just click on that to make sure it's black and white. We're also going to be using this double headed arrow, which as you can see, switches black and white from foreground to background and vice versa. Now what we need up here, we need our tool presets tab and we need a tool options tab. If you don't have those, see this little clicky thing here, configure this tab, click on it, add tab, and you will find the tool presets and the tool options, okay, in this list somewhere and just click on them to add them to that tab. Now we have the paintbrush selected. We want to use black. Whoops, click on it and it pops up. Um, for tool presets, we just want to use our basic brush. Go to tool options. Opacity is 100. And the size right now, I have it very small. We'll be changing the size. Uh, I didn't touch the aspect ratio, the angle, or the brush dynamics. I increased the fade length up to about 821. I, I just, it's not a, a number that's carved in stone as long as you make it kind of high. And repeats, none, etc. I just use the defaults. I click smooth stroke. I gave it a quality. Let's give it a quality of about 30 or so. And then the weight I increased also. So uh, once again, it doesn't matter how much, but you just, it says gravity of the pen. In other words, how hard it is. So you want it to be pretty hard. So I'll move it up to at least halfway. Okay, then when we put our brush up here, you can see it's awfully small. So let's go slide this back up and let's increase our brush size and see how big it is. We've got, we're going to remove the background. So right at the beginning, you can see how this works. My brush is really big. Now this works when you select using a brush tool. It works a lot better if you have a pen and tablet, but I don't know how many people have pen and tablets. So I'm just using a trackball, which works similarly to the mouse. And you can see, we, I think I'm going to make the size a little bit smaller here. Okay. And then you just keep doing this. Make sure you get all of it, especially around the edges. That's why I went right along the edge like this. Then when you get most of the big stuff done, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to zoom in. Okay. And it doesn't have to be that close. And back on the paintbrush tool. And you're going to have to decrease the size quite a bit. And now you're going to get in here and pay attention to what you're erasing. <coughs> uh oh, I made a mistake. Actually, I did that on purpose, if you couldn't tell. I'm not a very good actress. Anyway, if you make a mistake, the neat thing about using masks is you can undo them easily. Okay, with the eraser tool, sometimes it's a little hard. Come back over here to your foreground and background colors, the double-headed arrow. Click on it to make white your foreground color. And then you just come back here and paint over where you made the mistake. And look, it's all gone. And don't forget, come back over here, click the double-headed arrows again to use black. Black takes away the color and white puts it back on and you'll just be doing this until you basically erase, brush away all of your background.
Okay. You can see, you know, sometimes it does a better job than other times. You, if you see these kind of smudgy areas in here, make sure you get rid of them or they'll go with you if you make your selection. Okay. And it's just a process of zooming in, zooming out. You have to spend time to make a good selection. If you're going to use a selection in a photo, then just take the time to make a good one. And zooming in is just really, really important so you can catch the edges. Okay. You can see over there I made another mistake. Over there, let's make my size even smaller and get over here and put his eye back on. Nothing like a hummingbird that's missing an eye. And so that's one way of doing it. When you're finished, okay, let's go back to view, zoom, fit image in window so we get the whole thing again. When you're finished, you can see all the icky spots this left but when you're finished with this you're going to have a lot of empty space around it it pays to come up here and use the crop tool and then crop the part you want to use now for the hummingbird I'm going to want to have to uh, put him on his little branch he'd look whoops try her again He looked kind of dumb just kind of floating out in midair, so we're going to, well, if I can ever manage to get the crop tool to work, which generally I usually can. Anyway, there. Get him cropped and then just press enter and that way you get, you can get rid of a lot of the um, extra. You don't need all that extra canvas around the part of it you want to use. So that's one way to use a mask. And like I said, it takes a while. All these little in and out places in here, you're going to have to zoom in. Use your magnifying glass. Just draw around them and you can zoom in. And then you can use your paintbrush, okay, to remove the background around them. Okay, and that's really easy to do.